Thank you, ma'am. Um, and it's an honor to be here today to show that there is bipartisanship in Congress and in Washington. And, and particularly, we're here today to shed light on the urgent plight of Iranian women. And I want to thank the Iranian women who are here with us this morning and online. Um, they need immediate action in support of their fundamental rights and freedoms that every woman around the world should be able to have. We offer our unwavering commitment in, to advocating for freedom and the rights of women world wide. This can transcend party lines and unite on issues of human rights. I was the first woman to graduate from the Citadel, the Military College of South Carolina, and uh, I have a history of breaking grass ceilings. I'm the first Republican in Congress from my home state of South Carolina. And both uh, Sheila Jackson Lee and I um, have had many firsts. Uh, she was the first woman to earn a bachelor's degree from uh, Yale. And we both stood for um, stood at the forefront of breaking barriers, advocating for equal opportunities in our role here in Congress. We've both fought for the rights of all individuals, regardless of their gender. And um, showing Sheila Jackson Lee's, you know, leadership in Congress being one of the, the first congresswomen from Yale and showing her leadership up here for human rights and for women's rights. It's an honor to be with you this morning. Um, we'll not stand for the grave human rights violations inflicted upon the women of Iran by a regime that continues to stifle their voices, suppress their aspirations, and deny their basic inhumanity. We're here to address this injustice head on, to challenge the status quo, and to work towards a brighter future for all women of Iran. We're proud to, to mention in uh, HR Res uh, 100, introduced by Congresswoman McClintock, who's here with us today, which solidly condemns the Iranian regime's oppression of women, expresses support for the Iranian people's desire for a democratic, secular and non-nuclear republic of Iran and condemn, condemns the violations of human rights and state-sponsored terrorism by the current regime. The resolution is a testament to our commitment to justice and our determination to hold accountable those who perpetuate such heinous acts against women. We cannot stand for it. We must send a strong message that the international community stands in solidarity with Iranian women and will not tolerate the suppression of their rights. It is with great admiration and respect that we recognize today's witness, Maryam Rujavi, the president-elect of the National Council of Resistance of Iran. Her unwavering courage and tireless advocacy for the Iranian people, particularly women, has not gone unnoticed. Noticed. Ms. Rajavi, your virtual presence here today serves as a beacon of hope and a beacon of light for those who strive for freedom and equality in Iran. Let us also acknowledge the bravery of the Iranian people who have who've been bravely protesting for their fundamental rights and freedoms, literally putting their lives on the line for freedom. As a representative of the people of South Carolina, we're proud to mention that our state house unanimously passed House Resolu Resolution 4422, which expresses South Carolina's unequivocal support for the people of Iran in their pursuit of fundamental rights and freedoms. We stand in solidarity with the brave men and women of Iran who yearn for a society where their voices are heard, where their rights are respected, and where their aspirations are realized. I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to join hands today, rise above partisan politics in Washington, and advocate for the rights of Iranian women and women all over the world. Thank you, Madam. And I, I yield back.